Okay. You can do this. Hi, Sam. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I haven't seen your boat in the water for a while. Uh, yeah, it was time for annual haul out. That seems like a long time for routine maintenance. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like I can take her out anyway. They, uh, they want old Sam to, uh, dry out a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that seems sensible. Let's stop drinking, basically. No bananas on board? Really? Damn right. It's not just superstition. This one time, this greenhorn brought one on board. Well, you wouldn't believe the day we had. <laughs> I'm listening. Boat was 50 miles south in the Pacific, and our hold was full of the morning's catch. We started pulling in our nets when they got all tangled up in our propellers. I think the damn thing's useless. Stopped us in our tracks, miles off land. Someone to call out for it. Oh, there you are. Okay, so that's why he's, yeah. <laughs> Don't drive drunk, Sam, come on, man. <sighs> Can't put any of the chain or the valve covers back on. Boating so, uh... Did you need something? Michael Wang Jr. Is that Michael? Uh, I wanted to talk. I was hoping to. Uh, I, I actually oh, wanted to check out your boat. Is all. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, here she is. Hey, Kills, I left you my boat a month ago on a spa. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I left you my boat a month ago, and as far as I can tell, the only work you've done is test how much beer you can fit in it. I paid you in advance as a favour because I know you need it, but goddammit, I need my boat. Family is family, but get it done by this weekend, or I'm reporting it stolen, and you know you're tired of brown on your ass. Answer your goddamn phone. Oh, okay, so that's what he was on about. He was like, this firm would get it done. Where's your brother? We had a fight. We had a fight. <laughs> Bit of sibling rivalry, huh? Oh, you should have seen me and my little brother have at it. Right up... Right up till the end. What are you doing? Ah, my cousin Billy bought an old motorboat, but that fool drowned the engine taking her out. <laughs> yeah, I told him I'd fix it. How's the, uh, how's the house coming along? Slow. Slow. There's a lot to do. Of course. I mean, <laughs> there's a whole life, uh, lives in there. No shame. So, um, I was over at the station and I was thinking about some things. Yeah? You've known us for a while. Your whole lives. You puked all over my slick denim button-up. That's a nice memory. God. This article about ocean acidification is really unnerving. What's that? Oh, um, there's an article in today's paper about how climate change is ruining the ocean. Mm, yeah. <sighs> Fish have gotten puny. Spotting fewer and fewer whales. I don't know where we're headed, but... You sure as hell are going there. Would this help? Oh, uh, thanks, Princess, but that ain't it. 
Egypt. It's, uh, it's in a red can. Not a princess. I know that there's a can in here that he needs. Shit. These freaking nuts are stuck. I did see it in a video that I watched of this. Tips and tricks thing. So I'm recording this actually again. Um, unfortunately, it didn't do it the first time around. Oh, I know this one. The introduction will be forever burned in my brain. Mm. Your mother gave that to me. Really got me thinking about things. Impressive collection. You want some? Take them. I don't really navigate anymore. Uh, oh, uh, thanks. Hey, an encyclopedia of astronomy. I have this one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Real detail. Whoa. That's a really nice sextant. Oh, it sure is. A present Sex. for my old crew for my 30th birthday. Beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, it, it's mostly just for decoration these days, but, uh... I'm a big fan of doing things the old-fashioned way, you know? I don't believe there's anything around here, but, you know... Ah, let's keep it McCain, motherfucker. Hey, just one thing. Right. Stop, stop, fix the engine. Now, well, let's see. We're Should be change. just about... Pass me that wrench, will ya? Sam? Are you our father? <sighs> Figured you'd ask me that question someday. Well? I wish I was. What the hell kind of answer is that? I'm sorry, Ellie. But the man you're looking for... He ain't me. Oh, okay. Guess I'll just take your word for it then. Hey, you got no right coming in here getting angry at me for something I got nothing to do with. So close. You two are so close. I know you meant something to her. You honestly think I would have let you two grow up without a father? I may be a deadbeat, but I'm no coward. But you must know something. I truly don't. Your mama, she never. Look, we were just friends. I mean, Take a look at old Sam. No woman like Marianne would ever think twice about a guy like me. I'm so sick of this. I'm so tired of trying to unravel all of Marianne's fucking secrets. I don't... I don't understand her. I want to hate her so much. But I don't even know who she was. Come with me. I want to show you something. Come in. Come in. Oh. When was the last time you cracked a window? Looking sharp, first mate, Kansky. Uh, what's that now? These pictures. Oh, well, yeah, that... That was, uh... A long time ago.
Where all did you travel to? Mostly worked the Southeast Asia route. Vietnam, Cambodia, around those parts. Wow. I had no idea you were so worldly. Well, I, uh, I worked on a cargo, so I didn't get much shore leave. But, you know, there's, there's really nowhere my legs feel as steady as on the deck of a ship, steering her toward a deep blue horizon. Right, ill boss. I'm with ya. Oh, uh, what do you do on board? Oh, I worked the deck. Started out doing maintenance. Collecting the garbage, cleaning the hull. Ranked up to navigation after a while. Right. Hence the sextant. Got vouchers for the coffee shop. I doesn't use them, but yeah. Where's you there? Very nice. Who's kids? Let's open a window. Love this picture. You got a picture on my mama? Oh. Why is there a burnt up pan in your garbage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. Uh. Might have fallen asleep cooking dinner. Glad you're still with us. Dad, talk to Mum and she said you were having some trouble. It's not much, but hopefully it's enough to put some food in the fridge. Call me, Richard. $150. So, he has kids. Which is probably who those are in the picture. Which is hardly surprising. <laughs> Salmon casserole. I don't think we need to read the rest of the salmon casserole, but you know. Fucking hell, he's got a meal plan. Uh, you want to take a seat? Egg and cheese with Charles, tuna sandwich. Spaghetti and the meatball. Oat meat. Oat meal, sorry, oat meat. With yogurt. And fruit and honey, leftover, catch of the day, omelette, turkey sandwich, summer casserole. Nice. Leftovers, leftovers, Tessa. Alright. You got a meal plan. I like it. I like it, my man. man. What's see. all this? Here. I, uh, kept a few things. Can I have a boat? We got this on our trip to Juno. Uh -huh. <laughs> she saved up for a whole year to make that happen. Uh, dear Sam, I'm writing from a little hotel you recommended in downtown Juno. And you were right, the kids love the, the whale mural. Our other favourite was the Raven mural at City Hall. Taken. Uh, today, we took the tramway to the top of Mount Roberts. Kids wanted to hike the trail, but we only made it to the totems. Tomorrow, we're going to hike to Nugget Fall to see if the glacier still looks like what's on the other side. Hope, hope. Hope you're hauling them in by the barrel load. There we are. Happy birthday! <clears throat> Dear Sam, most bears only live 20 to 25, so congratulations on making it to 29. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't have survived that long out here without you, so thanks again for everything you do. Laura is a very lucky woman. I know you think the best part of your past has been erased, but as long as you don't forget, the, the Nychuk Rose will always be seaworthy. 
and it just might look a bit smaller in memory. I hope you get some time on the water with Richie this weekend and catch everything you deserve, including some memories. Happy birthday, my cherished friend, Ariane. It did say that he had a w it did say that the person had a wife though, didn't it? Swords and schemes. Oh, and I took her to see that for her birthday. <laughs> she hated every second of it. Whole drive back, she talked about how it butchered the books. Uh, did you like it? Did you like it? I, uh, well, <laughs> fell asleep before I even saw a sword. Your mother made that. Oh, she was a real artist, that one. Nice. Kind of like you. Nice dog. Okay. Can I look at what's in your hand? <laughs> look at these ones. She looks happy. Mm. She was. When was this? Why are you wearing a square hat? Oh, yeah, that was when I finally got my captain's license. Mary Ann's the one who pushed me to get it. Made me wear that stupid hat when I went to take the oath. <laughs> huh. Yeah, Laura took this one. We'd been working on that barn for months. That roof was a son of a bitch to sheath. Rain just kept on leaking into the loft. Wait, the barn has a loft? Oh, yeah. You didn't know? No, she didn't tell us. Is that a trap door? Yeah. Jim, you closed the whole thing up. Told her it was going to be real hard to get any hay up there, but she said she didn't mind. Do you know what's up there? I could tell she didn't want to talk about it, so I respected that. Well, we're going to have to empty it out for the sale, so I guess we'll know soon enough. Well, are you really going to go through with this? It's like I told you, that, that house meant everything to your mama. It's, it's all I, it's all we got left. He was going to say that's all I got left. You life. can't just throw it away. I'm not going to say let Marianne go, that's a bit much. I'm sorry. I know how hard this has been on you. But you need to move on. What's done is done. Maybe it would help to talk to someone about it? I never tell you about the time I broke my leg. Shin bone snapped in three different places. Ouch. Stuck in my ass for a month. No use to anybody. I was so down, I couldn't even bring myself to get out of bed. But your mama, well, she doesn't have none of that. She got me up one morning and drove me to a nice spot by the harbor. We watched the boats come in and out all morning. You can't let yourself be defined by the parts that are broken. That's what you told me. You gotta find a way to work with what you got. I think... I think about that... a lot. <laughs> gotta... Remember. to the bar and check out the loft. Let's go. It's a very good quote though. Don't be defined by broken parts. Uh, 
Let's go to the barn. Never did get that kind of rust taste for him. Probably an achievement. Learn the truth about Sam's relationship to the twins. So he's not the daddy. I can feel like Maori for a minute though. You're not the daddy! <laughs> Get the hell out of my property now! If you ever come back here, I'm going to kill you! Hey, Tyler. I've been looking all over the place for you. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Whoa! Hey, let's get you off your feet, okay? Listen, if you want to be alone, I'll go. But if there's anything you need to get off your chest, I won't snitch. <laughs> you saw Allison? How is she? Yeah. I, I went back to check on her this morning. She was in a pretty bad way. Whatever went on between you two, it, it wrecked her. Look, I don't want to drag you into this. Well, I'm already in it, and you look like hell, so... I just got a lot on my mind. Well, I know one thing that's good for that. As a wise man once said, fishing is the cure to the wounds of the heart. Okay. Uh, was that you? Was that wise man you? Hey, like I said, I gotta write my own legacy. So, you in? I, I don't know. Come on, we're burning daylight. Let's go. Where are we gonna go? Why go anywhere when we have a perfectly frozen lake right here? Ice fishing in November? Yeah. It got cold way fast this year. Climate change. That shit's gonna kill us. But hey, fish first. You can walk behind me if you're afraid, though. You're actually serious. I am a very serious man, Tyler. Let's go. We still have to get everything out of the car. <laughs> I like Michael. He's fun. Stage is set. It's showtime. Whenever you're ready. You sure you don't want to go? Nah. Look, no way I'm going to rob you of your first catch in your own backyard. <laughs> All right. Got everything you need, by the way? Yeah, I'm good. Man, I'm so gonna miss this. Miss what? Just hanging out and fishing and... You know, I'm not gonna have a lot of time after you move to Juno with school and the JC and everything. Right, right. So did any of the people you came up with at Fireweed land in Juno? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Once they left, I never really kept in touch. Really? Uh, everyone moves on, we weren't that close. Everyone does move on. Fuck it. Some of them were straight up awesome, but we just weren't that close, you know? None of them really got, like, family? I mean, I guess I got pretty tight with my counselor, Aaron, but I already have a family. Well... There's a reason we think of families as trees. They keep on sprouting new branches and... Oh, uh, hey, I think I've got a bite. You got this. Reel him in. Reel in the line before the fish gets away. Come on, pull up on the rod. Hold S to keep the marker in the sweet spot. Okay. Reel him in. Now give it a nice pull. Uh, 
I got it. I got it. I got me a fish. Slippery little. Got it. <laughs> Bravo. First of many. Pace yourself. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Thanks, Sensei. Oh, hey, did you want to make solid plans to hit the buzzard hole? The river might ice over soon, so we shouldn't wait too long. Yeah, sure. Sweet. I was planning to go Saturday. I'll pick you up on the way out. Cool. I'll set my alarm to ass crack of dawn. Mm. You got anything good in there? Maybe. But who says I'm willing to share? Okay, fine. Be that way. You have this whole fancy bag just for ice fishing? You don't mix and match. Ever. Jeez. You don't mess around, do you? <laughs> Told you earlier. I'm a very serious man. All right, here we go. Less fish, brothers. Okay. <laughs> How about them apples? Oh, <laughs> nice job. So, you weren't all talk. Impressed? I only see two fish in my cooler. For now. So, about last night. I don't know what Allison said, but from my side, well, I thought we were on the same page. But it turns out we weren't. Hey. So don't tell her I told you, but last week your sister was almost unbearable. She was jumping up and down with excitement at you coming back. Really? <laughs> you better believe it. Look, the last time you saw each other, you were kids. Just because things have changed doesn't mean you can't work it out. We don't have to do this, and I'll protect you. I'll protect don't you. worry. Whatever's up there, I'll protect you. We'll see how chivalrous you feel when you've got bats in that perfectly coiffed hair. Okay, so the handle was by the door. No lever. Man, this place is- I thought I saw something red over here, but I guess my mind's just playing tricks on me. The handle should be behind this. Ah, oh, there it is. <gasps> Yoink. It's opening up. The secret keeper always did store all the best secrets in the clouds. Yep. Come on, let's find a way to climb up there. You, well, I'd imagine that you have a fucking ladder. Shall I? Ha ha, ladder. Ladder, ladder, ladder. Yeet. Let's go up in a secret loft. What do we think's up there, people? Before we actually go up into the secret loft, what do people think is up in the secret loft? Write in the comments down below. It's gonna be a bit too late, but you know, write in the comments down below. <laughs> Let's check it out. What the fuck? Unexpected. Whoa. Can you see anything? Nope. Not a...
Here, found a switch. <gasps> Once upon a time, there was a young princess who felt helpless. Uh, holy shit. Well, that shaved a few years off my life. You ain't wrong. She left us something. Hmm. It's got a combination lock with letters. Do you think she hid the code somewhere in all this? Knowing Mary Ann, probably. <laughs> well, you want to do this? Yeah, let's start here. this? Yeah. It's from the story where the goblins tricked the Mad Hunter. It looks like it, but it's different, right? Can you check the book? Once upon a time, in a deep hedge forest, Crafty Goblin spied on the secret keeper she made her rounds gathering secrets that the animals in the forest had for sale. How does she get people's secrets? Do you suppose she peels open their heads? Let's find out, says a second. So the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched until the stalwart moose came to her head hanging low. It was my fault, I chose the uneven trail. I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into the stalwart moose's eyes. The goblins couldn't hear anything. They knew she was speaking to the moose, for the secret keeper spoke in people's minds with a gift of voice. After a few minutes, the stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter. Did I just give you something? The secret keeper nodded and handed him a coin. The stalwart moose nodded, plodded along down the trail, and spied goblins hiding in the woods, narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently, and the moose forced to carry on, but they were not doing anything obviously bad, because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what the secret was, said one of the goblins. So let's buy it. Let's buy the moose's secret. What do you have to trade? Secret hairbrush. <sighs> I'm not... sure if I'm missing... the... Because there's stuff written all over this book, like are they fish? The Mad Hunter gets his hand back. Is this gonna be? It moves. Oh, some of these parts are buttons. Does his smile look different to you? Even if the branch is a little different, I don't really think that means anything. Like, is there a picture I'm supposed to be looking at? Well, here it is. Not Why do you think she know. changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe it's a message. Like, the differences between the two mean something. Hmm. Something about Marianne, right? Since she's the princess? Yeah. Why don't we try to find them all and then see if it makes any sense? Okay, once upon a time in a castle just beyond the ancient deep forest, the Mad Hunter punished by the gold lady for failing to return with the wise princess. For your failure, said the gold lady, I will take your left hand. You will return to the ancient and deep forest and hunt the wise princess. If you can bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again and I will take your right hand. The mad hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both hands, he would never be able to hunt again and would no longer be a mad hunter, but only a madman. So, the Mad Hunter returned to the ancient deep forest searching with his piercing eye for the wise princess. The crafty goblins were also searching for mischief when they saw the Mad Hunter on the prowl. We cannot let him find the princess of the goblins, so they devised a plan. It was wash day, and the princess had hung a beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the line and stuffed it full of straw, and then returned to where the Mad Hunter was scouring the paths of the forest. 
As the mud hunter turned down the path that would have led him to the big wooden house, the goblins danced the straw princess out in and out of view in the opposite direction. The rooms were. The mad hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the day and into the night, they led him away from the true princess. As night fell, the crafty goblins realized the error in their plan. The mad hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would not be kind. So, they put their heads together and came up with a plan. It did not take them long to realize where they should go. They led the mad hunter to the edge of the deep, icy lake. When he came into view, they weighed the fake princess down with stones and dropped her into the frigid water, careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge on them. The mad hunter removed his clothing and dove in after the fake princess. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into the chilly water. Down below, where the ice covered the lake's surface, finally he caught her, but when he spun her toward him, he realised that she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw. He then felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to retrieve her gown from the clothing line and found it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called goblins, did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from the cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? asked the princess. Sad and angry that she'd lost her only dress. Let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and that they produced his clothing, which was a bit large for the princess, but much warmer than a beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friend, she said, for rescuing me, and for this clothing, which will keep me much warmer in winter than my beautiful gown. The mad hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the moon hag. She did not kill him, because even... Reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. That is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the map. Okay, the spot the differences. So, I'm taking it that all we need to do here is spot the differences. There is no princess behind the tree. There is an extra star. Huh. No goblins. Yeah. In the original, the goblins managed to save the princess from the mad hunter. So we saved Marianne from something. But not in this version? Also no castle. Why do you think she added that castle in the background? See the color of the flag? It could be her mother's castle. It looks like the princess is running away from it. So, Marianne ran away from home. And she grew up kind of rich? I don't think there's any... Oh no, yes. Because the hand is on the other side. Okay, so there is, a... there is blue, there is pink. There is a pink one there, as well. The tree branch... It's not different. Uh, it's not the same title, so I guess that counts as a difference. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a princess who left, who felt hopeless. Or not. So it was that one. Maybe not. But the title is different. That one. It is the differences between the two. She added their castle background. No goblins. And the hand. Then her. Ah! That's it. We have done Whoa. This. What's in there? I had to do it in the right order, it would appear. Pictures, letters. Have you ever seen it? Oh, poor thing. My Why would she keep an old drawing of a pet in here? I'll miss you forever. I can't believe she was a ballet dancer. Mary Ann. And a good one, too. God, that's so not her. Well, it must be, my friend. So, you know. 
Did you know she studied engineering? No. It, it looks like she changed her major to visual arts. I don't think she actually got it changed. The paper's not signed and it's all wrinkled. Like someone tried to throw it away. Multimeta? Marianne, I can't do this anymore. You deserve better than cliche bullshit like it's not you, it's me. But the truth is, it's all been too much to deal with and I've realized I'm not ready. Maybe if we could have dealt with all this on our own, without your mum constantly putting pressure on us, things could have been different. But the damage is done and it's probably too late for that now. I'm sorry. You're an amazing person and you made me feel a better man. I hate myself for doing this, but I feel like we'd both be better off apart. There I go with cliches again. But don't ever stop being who you are. Here, but I'm gone. Run. Could this guy have been any more cryptic? You think the guy okay. with her is Brent? From the letter? I would guess so. Uh... The gold lady. That was definitely her mom. So, did Marianne grow up kinda rich? Maybe. Would have been nice to have some of that. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of her that young. I think that's her mom in the background. Hmm. It could be, it could be, it could be. Right, I think we looked at that. We looked at everything in there. Tyler, see that little light? I think we need to solve this one next. There's the gold lady again. Her cool parents kept a lot her away in a rusty past. All over the board. There was a figure of her in that stash by the Mad Hunter painting, right? Oh, yeah. So, maybe all of this is related to what we found in there. So there's a figure of the gold lady in the stash by the painting. Okay. So... I don't know, bird. Hey, I can move the piece next to the gold lady. What? All these pictures. They look like images from Marianne's life before Delos, don't they? Well, some of them do anyway. Maybe that's it then. We need to figure out which ones are real. Okay, so bird. She was a ballet dancer. The princess dancing, playing violin, spinning wool. Then I guess this is stuff she did for fun. Notice how unhappy she looks in all these pictures. I don't think she was having any fun. Then she went engineering? The wise princess looks like she's trying to run away. And she's being watched by the gold lady. Hmm. And then... Painting? Hmm. What's the gold lady do? Is that it? Oh, it's opening. Did it. Oh, yes, yeah, because she wanted to paint. So she went into engineering, but wanted to paint instead. What's in there this time? That's. Cabin. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young and happy. Certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. Oh, she was a watchmaker. Okay. Salmonberry Park. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. So weird to imagine her living in a community like that. With, you know, other people. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. 
Where was prom queen Mary Ann when the whole town was turning on us? Okay, so from the good people of Sal uh, Salmon Berry Park, I was going to say Salmon Berry, but yeah, Salmon Berry Park, Kodiak Island. Don't be a stranger, keep on looking for those answers to the questions in your head, to which you're blind. Smiley face, Shelly. We miss you already, Solemn Bromwin. Sorry we're losing you to modern civilization. We'll miss your positive attitude and your adventurous spirit. Also, your wild edibles picking, your wild edibles kicking skills. Fredos. Pretty Marcos. Bon voyage, Marianne from Rick. And Marianne, you have the warmest, most beautiful aura. And I know you'll keep on shining wherever you land. Peace and blessings, Jurit. Jurita, and thanks for being our little ray of sunshine. Godspeed. Cobra and Wate, I love your pictures. I love I like your pictures. I love Kamala. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, it says Daddy. Her father. Marianne, I hope this letter finds you, but since you didn't leave any contact information, I will have to... I'm going to knock this thing out in a minute. Um, I will have to send it to your aunt and hope for the best. I'm writing to inform you that your mother passed away last week. We just had our funeral reception. The house has been filled with people all day. Friends, family, colleagues and church members. It's now 11pm and I'm sitting alone in the kitchen table, surrounded by dozens of trays of food, flowers and sympathy cards. Your cousin... Heidi brought in a beautiful photo album full of our holiday pictures to look on her. You're there in all of them, but you weren't here today. We haven't heard from you in four years and can only hope you've made it to Alaska or wherever you are, and that you and your child are both safe. So she was pregnant with um, the twins at the time. Your mother has been sick and depressed for years, and you can imagine why. The pain of being shunned by her own daughter, knowing she would never get to see her grandchild grow up. It spread through her body like cancer and consumed her completely. All this suffering simply because she ran away like a temperamental little girl instead of accepting her help when you got pregnant out of wedlock after dropping out of college. And without a penny to your name, she only stepped up to help because she knew you weren't ready to raise a child properly, Marianne. A mother's duty doesn't end when her children leave home. Now that you're a mother yourself, I hope you'll begin to understand that good parenting isn't about coddling children. It's about providing for them and shaping them into the people they're supposed to become, whether they like it or not. I won't trouble you again. You made your intentions clear. I just thought you should know. Dad. Douchebag.com. Really? Fucking douche. What the hell? Marianne was pregnant in 1992, before she even got here. Before us? What? Do we have a long lost sibling out there somewhere? It's possible, but she could have given it up or miscarried. Who knows? Yeah, you're right. Do you think we could track down her father? You mean the grandfather she never told us about? I don't think I want to. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Nope. Fine. Let's keep digging. <clears throat> That's a hail to the no. Ain't nobody needing parts of that shit. Guy seems like a douche nozzle. This. Why are these pictures from the Book of Goblins here? I, I don't know. After Gavin's loop. Okay, so um, one day she took her tiara and ran away. What's to the this? Forest. Hmm. Some sort of map. Uh. I don't know, Chief. House. This is the princess's house. Dinner. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Berries. Was it berries next or clock next? I think it was clock next, wasn't it? I'm 
no shot. Let me have a look. <clears throat> yeah, clock next, then the letter, then salmon bear. Okay, so clock next. Some sort of clock? Then castle. That's the gold lady's castle. Then. What's that? Come on. No? Okay. Maybe it was actually the berries before. What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmon berry flowers. Hey. That's the gold lady. Come on. No? Okay. You need help? Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? Castle clock in the castle. I'm trying to make sense of the castle in the bottom left corner. Well, it's like we were saying. The gold lady lived in one, so it probably represents Marianne's childhood home. So that would be the same, then, wouldn't it? So hold on, wouldn't the castle be first? Some sort of clock? So the castle would That's burst. the gold lady's castle. Then she would go... She would run away, be a watchmaker. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Some sort of clock? This is the princess's house. What's that? Come on. Unless... What's that plant thing on top? Oh, this is the princess's. Come on. Fuck it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not sure on this one. Okay, let's... Let me just... Check something. I think I've missed something in the cabinet. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young and happy. There's a date on this. Both of her parents kind of sound like jerks. So 96. I would have run away too. So that's 96. That's 92, so this comes first. I don't think that this is dated. I'm just wondering if the dates will tell me <clears throat> about when everything happened. If there's any dates on them. June 92. Cemetery Park. Okay. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. So weird to imagine her living in a community like that. So June with, 92. You know, other people. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Where was prom queen Mary Ann when the whole town was turning on us? So it's basically... 7th of the 5th, which is 17th, 96th, though, so that's after. It's still June, but it's after. But no, it isn't. Fifth is May. Fuck am I about? So that's May, June, and June. So castle, maybe? Then. Berries. Then the watch. Dinner table and house. So let's just select that. Select What's that plant thing on top? Berries. Oh, those are definitely salmon berry flowers. Hey. Some sort of clock? Clock. The dinner and then the house? This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. This is the princess's. Come on. That one. Maybe. 
I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I suck on this one. Ah, right. So we got the clock. Maybe this is the, the princess's house. And then have the dinner in the princess's this house? This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Boomstick. Yes. Oh, they What's have the letters on too. Another letter? I've just actually noticed that they have the letters on the doors. <gasps> the princess oh, is lost. Is this from the Book of Goblins? Not that I know oh, of. Well, sure looks like it could be. Treasure. Okay, let's go. Um, the princess is lost. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She had made it through the woods and to the house with nothing left but the clothes on her back and a single item from her old life, a splendid tiara. She lost almost everything in her desperate flight from the Mad Hunter. The trees tore the rucksack from her back and shredded her dress and left a pattern of red welts on her skin. But through it all, she clutched her tiara close to her chest, fearing any misstep could cause it to fall from her arms and break. The tiara had its own spot in a big wooden house, a pillar near the window where the sun would catch on its surface to shine and wink. The princess could stare for hours at the tiara, marvelling at its beauty and running her thumb down its curves. Every morning she would wake and she would tend to it, polishing its every surface to be sure it shone as brightly as it possibly could. Then she would pluck it up, place it on her head and walk the woods, feeling somehow more complete. Because what, after all, was a princess without a crown? Every night she would place it upon its pillow, give it a quick kiss and go to bed. On her way, she would pause and glance back, be sure it was still there. She hated to be separated from it, but she knew it was the safest, safest on the pillow while she slept. One night, the princess woke to a raging storm. The wind howled against the walls, rattled the windows in their panes. Fearing a gust might burst open a window and blow the tiara to the ground, she plucked it from its pillow and brought it to bed with her. All through the night she held the tiara close, and in the morning she woke to find herself still cradling it. The storm had passed, and the princess relaxed. That day was the same as any other. Though she perhaps gave the tiara an even more thorough cleaning, grateful as she was that nothing had gone wrong. That night she placed the tiara upon its pillow, gave it a quick kiss, and went to bed, pausing on her way to be sure it was still there. In the morning, she woke and sensed immediately that something was wrong. In the living room, the tiara lay on the, f on the ground, broken, dull, faded. Nothing else in the room had changed. The pillow was exactly where she'd left it. The window was closed. There had been no storm, no wind, no sign that anything at all could have gone amiss. Only the broken tiara, mute upon the ground. She picked it up, held it in her hands with a guttural cry. But though she tried to fix, to polish it, it's gone, beyond repair, with no shine left. The princess held the tiara through the day and through the next night, sitting in the same spot at the window where she used to polish it. When the sun rose, she looked outside and her gaze fixed on a sapling. She remembered how the sapling had survived the winter, clinging to life despite the frozen, unforgiving earth. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling, and as a final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in the world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a one woman alone in the deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure, and her title. I think I might know what that story is about. I think she lost the baby. And the tiara is representative of said baby. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure and her title. That was the story she read us that night. God, it makes sense now. Yeah, she got pregnant. And 
She ran away to start a new life. And then she made her way to Delos Crossing, where she was finally happy. But then the baby died. I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She left everything behind, built a whole new life for him. And then he was just gone. I guess having us helps her move on, but when it looked like we were gonna be taken away, she snapped. She just couldn't lose any more children. It really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but all I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah, but we still haven't seen what's in that chest. Jesus Christ. So yeah, I think he's he's kind of explained okay, it. Okay, so how do we open it? The princess lost her most precious treasure. That's why it all happened. I still can't wrap my head around it. Here, the secret keeper, hiding secrets in the clouds. Gold lady sees uh. locked up in her castle. So this is basically, if I had them all. Back in your pond, big frog. We'll let the mangy muskrat have his rock back. I'm gonna need to figure out where that bear the is. Ice King goes in the forest, obviously. There you go, stalwart moose. And there is one missing. Unfortunately, which is the bear. Actually, there might be more missing than that. Crafty goblins go here. The wise princess goes in the big wooden house, of course. The mad hunter, always on the princess's trail. The moon hag's gotta be imprisoned in her lake. So yeah, I'm missing three at the minute. <clears throat> Tyler, we're not done with this one. We'll get to those later. Let's finish this one, okay? Okay, so O, E... Actually, no, it's O, the fish thing, and then E. All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> Thing, and then he. Am I right? Yeah, oh, fish thing, and then he. All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> That's the right way, I think. Unless, yeah, that is the right way, unless it's backwards. Or it's O A L because it's as you see it in the place.
Unless... Because it's that bad now. Maybe. Why don't we just break this open? There's a crowbar right downstairs. What? No. You don't want to try and figure out what all this means? I'm so done with her riddles. Whoa. Yes. Leo. That's what she was going to name the kid. Whoa. Did it just get darker in here? Yes. Ollie, she, uh, she noticed. Dear Allison and Ollie. I was her son. Yeah. Um, I think he was called Illyria before. We unite stories to under... What are we write stories to understand and be understood. But what good is a story without a first act? I'm sorry, I kept mine from you so long. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? That's where she put the baby. Is that? Leo Ronan. Oh. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? We did. It's better we know what happened, even... even if it's hard. And there's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. Come on, let's go to the dock. It's time to finish this. How about that, Chief? The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? Uh, the old bear's gifts to the princess. Is there a symbol? The old bear's gifts to the princess. Or am I just gonna have to look for the story? The old bear and the princess. Ah, after the day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear. A fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, and a new bloomed bluebell. One spring, when... Uh, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there and rode across the river. The old bear began to think the princess should be his maid. After all, she had no maid and she needed one. She would need a... Right, okay, so... Fresh caught salmon, handful of ripe berries, and a new bloomed bluebell. So... What was first? Fresh caught salmon was first. would be huh. that one. Fresh caught salmon? Berries? Some honey? Nope. Actually, I'm not sure. Some... A newly bloomed bluebell? Yeah, that's one of them. Fresh caught berries. Hazelnuts. No, that's hazelnuts, not berries. Actually, I'm not sure. Some roses, maybe? Wait. So that one, berries. Actually, I'm not sure. A newly bloomed bluebell? A handful of ripe berries? There we go. We did it. Nice. <clears throat> Man, he had it bad. Just couldn't let go. Sorry for the note under the door, like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple of times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the hair loft, so I figured you were in, but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. 
I know I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You're strong and kind, and you know so much. It's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went to my head. But I want you to know that I got the message and I'm going to get out of your hair now. And that doesn't need to be any bad feelings. We can pass in the street and say hello or not. It's okay. I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealant in there. You might need to take it to the shop, though. Let me know if you want me to come with you, because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. If not, no big deal. Sam. Okay. Um... The Crafty Goblin's Loot. That's from the Princess and the Two Thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake, which is arguably the best part of that illustration. All right, Picasso. Uh -huh. And you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, huh? Uh... Crafty Goblin's Loot. The Fixer's House. Goblins in the Ice Cave. Princess's Party. Princess and the two thieves. Once upon a time in an ancient deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. The house was built with strong wood of the forest to get the princess warm and safe. The princess was not a native of the forest, but she never spoke about where... <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> she never spoke about where she'd come from, for it made her cry. She did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was deep and big, and many paths led to her house, and not many visitors passed by. The princess was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide her for her, but its generosity had to be respected, so she only took what she needed, and for a long time, life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. One winter day, one snow blanketed the earth and ice. Bent the trees low, the wise princess realised that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. Maybe it's the birds, or the mice. For the time, the princess was okay with losing some food for winter was long and little creatures needed to eat too, but then small items started to disappear as well. Spoons, plates, forks, knives and blankets. If it was as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared in another. There can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So she went outside to look for traces in the snow and noises in the wind, but there was nothing to be found and nor to be heard. That's strange, said the princess. Maybe the thief is hiding inside my house. For days she hunted, looking behind the curtains, under the beds, the attic, the chimney, behind poles, under carpets, but she found nothing. As she searched, food kept on disappearing night after night. I will make a cake, frowned the princess. A big cake with every egg and fruit and nut I still have. So I have only one thing to keep my eye on. She spent the whole day making a cake and ev using everything she had left. The cake was so big that she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive a long winter, she said. So she added a, a lock to the oven and kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning, the cake had been the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried, but the cake was last of food until the snow melted. But then she noticed two tiny trails of feet on the spill in the spilled flour, and she followed the tracks to the hidden hatch in the floorboards. That's how the princess realised that there were two tiny thieves were living under a wooden under a, a wooden house right below her feet. So perhaps it is what they took first and stuff like that. So fruits, nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. So fruits, nuts and eggs. Maybe they took some of the princess's fruit? Yes, they did. Fruits. Uh, nuts and eggs, maybe? Steal the eggs. I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Are they nuts or candy? Did they steal candy? Nope. Maybe not. Uh, uh, some flour for the cake, maybe? No, it would be eggs, wouldn't it? Maybe not. Hmm. Didn't they take some of the princess's clothes? Some flour for the cake, maybe? Or not? Let's pull that back, pull that maybe back. not. Some flour for the cake, maybe? Actually, I'm not sure. What if they took some spoons? Oh, God. <clears throat> I got That's it right it. without meaning to. I didn't actually mean to get it right. I don't think I actually read the right story. 
and the goblins and the princesses live. The princess makes new friends. Last day of care. Ah, the feast went on until the day of her last cake, which had been made of the last of her eggs, the last of her fruit, and last of her nuts, and last of her flour. Well, at least, well, that last cake was stolen too. What she had seen was two tiny spill flour. Been hiding, I think. Yeah, okay. I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. That's a good drawing. The Pettiest Princess. So, is there anything else to look at up here? Any? Aha! Okay, so we've got all these to do. Very old beavers repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Okay. Do we have a contents page? We do. Uh, do, 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 do. The beaver fixes the house. <clears throat> Once upon a time in an ancient deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. One night, a particularly violent storm shook the house. It shook the shingles on the roof from the planks and the walls. It even shook the beams on which the house stood, blowing the whole thing near to the ground. The princess hid in the closet, fearing the house would come down on her as she slept. In the morning, the house was still standing, but it was badly damaged. The storm had blown shingles off the roof, planks off the walls, and even bent a post upon which the house stood. The first two things she could fix, but the last concerned her. What will I do? despaired the princess. Although she knew many things, she did not know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then the old bear came to see if the princess had trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back into place, he said, Stop, princess, let me do that for you. I'm happy to do it, said the princess, but if you want to help me with the roof, you may. When the pair were done with the roof, the walls, the roof and the walls, they examined the bent support post. I could throw my body against it, said the old bear. I'm very large. He stretched up. Onto his hind legs, being sure the princess could appreciate how very large he was. Then charged straight at the post, he threw his body against it with an impressive thud. The impact moved the post, but not too far, and it ended up bent the other direction. The wise princess decided more precision was needed. She thought then of the very old beaver who kept an excellent crafted dam. Perhaps she could help. She went looking for the very old beaver and found the industrious animal hard at work, slapping down mud on part of her dam that had blown apart in the storm. Most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things. The princess knew that she had come to the right place. Beaver, she said, my house is damaged in the storm. Would you help me fix it? I believe I could do that, yes, said the very old beaver. She paused, fixing her own dam and followed the princess. The very old beaver examined the big wooden house and nodded. It's an easy fix, she said, and she set about writing the post with the loud slaps of her tail. When she was done, the wise princess struck the beaver's head. Thank you, beaver, she said. The wind blew shingles off the roof, planks off the walls, and even bent this post. Now, thanks to you, I still have a home. Think nothing of it, said the very old beaver, who returned to work on her own dam once again. That winter, the very old beaver grew ill. Bury her. She was not able to fix her den nor gather food. When the princess found out, she set about delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews of corn and beans and baskets full of bark and twigs and the beaver's favourite aspen. One day, the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to fall apart. She set about fixing it, and though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, the fix kept the creature warm and dry. Thank you, said the very old beaver. Of course, said the princess. You helped me when a storm blew my house near the ground, near to the ground. Thanks to you, I still have a home, and I'm happy to do the same. The princess continued to nurse the old beaver until the day she came to the dam and the forest was still. No birds sang, no branches rustled, no small things skittered un under the underbrush. Oh, said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, for she knew the old beaver had passed on. Goodbye, my friend. And that is how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house, and how the wise princess repaid her kindness. Okay. So the first things that need to be done is shingles off the roof, planks off the walls, and then the post. So shingles off the roof. Huh, she fixed the roof shingles. Planks off the walls. She fixed the planks that were blown off the walls. And then the bent post. She slapped the post with- All right. There we go. That should have kept going, by the way. I don't know why Damn. it stopped so much. It must have been rough on Eddie. Yeah, he, um... He doesn't really like to talk about her. Dear Marianne, 
you cover your ears every time I try and have this conversation with you, so I thought it'd be a I thought I'd have a better chance doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my melancholic rambling short and sweet. I want to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me for these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you wanted me to keep fighting this disease and hoping for recovery, but I've always been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go. And that time has come. I would like to ask you for one last favour. Please take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died, but I know he's in pain. I would be so much more at peace knowing he still has a family. Maybe you could teach the kids how to fish. He loves spending time with them. Thank you for the warmth and the peace you brought my life. Give the kids a good kiss for me, Will. Carol. So the beaver that um, looked after her house, and then she looked after the beaver. It's Eddie's mum. Damn. The crafty goblins are good. Crafty deeds. goblins, good deeds. Of course. The goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? You know, I don't really remember. Okay, the crafty goblins. Good deeds. Uh, Goblin Strickland Mount Hunter, Pelican Hunter, Pelican Hunter, Boys, the Goblin Serval Beaver, every time the old king, the Pelican forgives the goblins, Goblin Moon, the Ice Child, Trickle Moss, Rod teaches the goblins, the Mad Hunter gets his hand back. Um, hmm. Don't know on this one, actually. So it's the goblins had to do things to maybe it's pelican forgives the goblins goblins save the old beaver goblins to the ice king pelican forgives goblins once upon a time in deep ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. They lived with the wise princess, who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. They left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day, they were out foraging for food. The pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped a smorgasbord from her beak, which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. There were crabs in red, blue, gold and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple shiny urchins, spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as a pelican, one clam, took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we took just a little? Asked one goblin to the other. Her beak never empties, or she won't possibly miss a couple of crabs. So to second, licking her lips, they agreed, so they crept over and filled some crabs and ran. The goblin scuffed crabs, but when they finished, they found they were still hungry. She won't miss a handful of shrimp. One goblin said to the other, the goblin scuffed down the shrimp. Maybe a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblin scuffed the scallops, but when they were finished, they found that they were still hungry, so they went back for the clams, the urchins, and finally, even the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? She asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed about their crime. The pelican dismayed. But she was a charitable hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins, said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must, in turn, follow my example and be generous with others as I am for you. Take that to heart, I will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving heart, said the pelican. Crafty Goblin realised how much they had to give him for the rest of the day they looked for ways to help other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose struggling with an itchy hard to reach spot, spot on his back so they climbed up and gave it a good scratch. So... Moose is forest. Scratch the moose. They gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. 
Next, they helped the old bear, who could not get honey out of a narrow beehive. They climbed up to the top of the tree with the hive, and dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the princess crying over the loss she would not speak about, so they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug, and stayed until she felt better. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good being as generous as I am? asked the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems that we can't solve on our own. On our own, sorry. But if everybody goes about with generosity in their hearts, then there is always someone on hand to help. But we all must commit to do so. And there may be no one there to help. Uh, there may be no one there to help you when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for a food and lesson. Of course, by this time they were hungry again and remained an ongoing problem till the day the stalwart moose taught them to fish. That is another story. That is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. So, we need to get honey out of the beehive and then to hug the princess. They broke open the beehive for the bear. And then they hugged the princess. They hugged the princess when she was crying. Nailed it. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. <clears throat> the Pelican Crossing is a speciality gift boutique located near the O'Shea Glacier, catering to the Gus the new Channel Taurus, as well as Dallas Crossing locals, we specialize in an assortment of high quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs to personalized apparel and locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first stop to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and craft scene and customers, in addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products. The consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Vecchi store co owner Tessie Vecchi and up and coming artist Marianne Ronan. The business plan is prepared to obtain finance in the amount of $20,000 to purchase inventory and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even, and in year two, we plan to generate a moderate profit, working on the executive summary part of the business plan. What do you think, Tessa? So they were going to open up a shop together, which is pretty baller, to be honest with you. So, uh, which one do we go for now? Uh, this one, I think. Oh, we've done the old bear's gifts for the princess. We've done that one. We've done that one. And we've done that one. No. I think there's anything else to do in here. No, there isn't. Okay. So I don't believe that there is anything else to do in this room because we've done all of the puzzles and everything like that. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? I guess we could stay a little longer if you think there's more to find. I don't know. Why are you standing over here? I haven't found all the pieces, so I'm going to have to go and find them and just see if this adds anything to the story, which I'll go and do a little bit later on. Um, I may not do it on I wish you just explained all this to us. Or I might put it at the end of the series. But yeah, I don't think there is anything else to actually deal with up here. Because we've got all the pieces from all of the puzzles. So yeah, I, th I think we're good. I think we've got all the pieces from the puzzles. I think that that would have been a puzzle if I'd have found all of the pieces. But... Yeah. We don't have them all, so... You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. 
Me too. And for right now, we are going to end this bit right here. I will see you all in the very next episode. If you're enjoying what you see, please do leave a like. If you find yourself coming back here on the regular, please do subscribe to the channel. I will be back with what could possibly be... Actually, you know what? I will make the next episode the very last episode. We will get through the entire rest of the game, doesn't matter how long it is. Um, unless it's, like, extortionately long. And then perhaps we won't, but I will get through it all. Um, does it show here? Ah, there is an obstacle here. So we've got one, two, three obstacles not found. So there's three obstacles not found, which is one in chapter one, one in chapter two, and one in chapter three. So we still need to find all of those things as well, which I'll go back and, you know, figure it out. But for right now, join me later on for what could be the last episode. Thank you.